Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm aware with this video that I'm uh, stirring the pot a bit, so I do expect some controversy and uh, I will say right up front that um, I would like your feedback on this theory that I'm working on, um, whether it be positive, negative, in between, whatever it is. I want you to uh, pipe up and let me know what you're seeing, what you are seeing and why you think things are happening as they are. Um, because I am, I would appreciate very much your, uh, your input on the matter. Um, I also think that I'm getting ahead of myself a bit because uh, I have some uh, other much more general videos about uh, typing tips coming up. Um, but I thought this one would be a good one to do right now just because it's, it's so fresh on the heels of all of this uh, material that I put out there about the INs and how much I, uh, I really, really... Uh, appreciate you guys and I really like you and I I know a lot of you and you know I'm I'm a real uh, fan so if I was going to say anything sensitive in this area I thought now might be a good time a better time to do it than later I have so many ideas for uh, episodes I, I don't even know how many are are coming but um anyway so uh, so here I'll give you a little bit of a background of where I'm coming from for this, um, I'm someone who has been uh, really interested in the uh, MBTI for the better part of 20 years. And almost all of um, my uh, experience until about two months ago, uh, all of my um, sort of empirical input, you could say, uh, or external world input, uh, no, sorry, live input, that's a better way of describing it, interaction with real live people and um, talking about typing and seeing people who have been officially uh, uh, typed by certified practitioners and seeing how they behave and what they do and what they say and what they think of everything. Um, most of my information before uh, two months ago, was um, all of it, in fact, was coming from books on the MBTI, such as the excellent ones by uh, Baron and Teeger and Kiersey and so on, as well as lots and lots of web research, um, reading research, and... Um, I think that in a way I'm, I might be quite well positioned to pose some of these questions. I mean, I, I am going just according to my own leadings here and my own interests, but um, I've tested, I've been <clears throat> officially uh, assessed as an uh, ENFP, and that type has uh, dominant extroverted intuition running its show. And that preference was, um, is very, very strong, very clear in my case. And uh, I know, I think it's kind of obvious <laughs> in how I present myself and what I say and how I dress and so on. Like it's, it's really pronounced, this, um, this preference, and that the sort of fruits of that cognitive function are, are right out on display in, in pretty much everything that I do. Um, so there's that. And what this type is, and, and also the NTP who shares this uh, dominant cognitive function, um, what those two types are particularly fantastic at, which is not to say that um, none of the other types um, match us in this, or, or nor is it to say, this is a very important point, nor is it to say that just any ENFP or ENTP is great at this. Some might argue I'm not that great at this, but um, because, you know, there, there's, a, there's preference, which is what the MBTI assesses, and then there's ability, which is a whole other matter, actually. Um, for another video, get into that some more. Um, however, let's just say, though, that uh, I have a wide social network from many, many different people who I've uh, completely tired out with talking about the MBTI over the last many years. Um, but I also have managed to get uh, many, many friends of mine, particularly my NF friends, and some of my NT friends uh, interested in it. Um, so that's been a lot of fodder for discussion right there. Uh, the other thing is that I've been a teacher, so that brought me in contact with a lot of different kinds of people uh, as a language teacher. So that was really people from all walks of life that I was encountering. It wasn't just sort of like you know a specific niche area that I was teaching in. Um, another way that I've come in contact with a heck of a lot of people and have been able to bring to bear my dominant you know, my developed dominant function to, you know, take in lots of exterior world information about type and people and how they behave and how they're thinking and how what they're thinking, you know, how, you know, their preferences are translating into action. Um, the other thing is I've, I've been a host to 450 or I think in, ca in counting, 
I'm not even sure it might be more than that now but I share my home with travelers and I've been doing that for several years so um, I've had the opportunity also to have my home be a kind of MBTI lab because I'm having people coming and living with me for several days at a time to even you know a couple of weeks at a time and when that happens that means that the that of course because I'm in this house you know the Myers-Briggs temperament indicator might come up and I'm, I'm also meeting a lot of people creative thinking types are attracted to my house and my decor and me so you know I'm talking to a lot of those people um, about the MBTI over all this time and what I'm also getting to see is uh, you know when someone of course these people are not behaving in my home the way they are behaving uh, at in their own but uh, still I would be able to see how people um, I do get a glimpse into how people behave a little bit, you know, and seek sort of correlations and wonder about correlations between, again, dress, appearance, behavior, demeanor, tone of voice, and how people are treating, how they're interacting with one another, these people who are in intimate relationships, who are unselfconsciously just living in my house with me. Um, and also I get to see how they arrange their environments a little bit. Um, for example, some types are very... Um, some people just leave their, their guest room doors open. So if I'm going down the hall, like without invading privacy or doing anything weird, I can just glance over. And, you know, people, the, the way people interact with this fixed environment that is mine, then I'm very familiar with, and I'm very familiar with what's in this house and how, where things usually are placed. Um, my house is kind of, can be in a bit of an MBTI lab because that's what I'm thinking about. So for so when I can see into a guest room, um, you know, I can see that the ones that the, the guests that are very sort of tidy, put together, no loose threads, you know, like to blow dry their hair and set it a certain way in the morning and like have a way of doing things in their rooms. I can see that like many of them will um, so described will be making their beds every day and like putting the pillows back on the bed and just in a very attractive way and. Uh, the way that their things will be, you know, sort of at right angles on the vanity, sort of all par you know, parceled out and well organized. Um, and then there are other people who uh, just, you know, leave the bed unmade, their clothes are strewn all over the room, um, and so on. Uh, and I get to notice where it's almost like my house becomes a, a set for a play or a movie or something, you know, and I get to see how different kinds of people interact with their environments. Um, like one weird little thing I've noticed is I, I ha I've had many architects uh, come here. I think about eight. Um, and <laughs> these are all very different people. They're distinct individuals with all of their thousands of little things that make them unique and special. But one thing they all have had in common is that the way they stack their dishes in the rack is usually very distinctive. It's usually, in each case, it's been a kind of arrangement like I've never seen before. And uh, again, don't know what that's about, but just a weird little thing that I noticed. So that's where I'm coming from. Now, about two months ago, I started uh, to use this whole new avenue of research, this vast new avenue of research, which is here on YouTube. Um, I was doing research for uh, some friends, some INFJ friends and INFP friends, and there's some stuff I wanted to gather for them. And also just because I'm just so, so interested in the MBTI. And as you will know, if you've seen my previous videos, I'm very, very interested in these IN types, these creative thinking introverts. Um, so, wow, you know, to come out on YouTube and then actually see so many more of these very, very rare introverted types uh, talking at length about all their stuff and, and showing, and this is the other thing, showing themselves. Um, and most of these people are, are making their recordings <clears throat> within their own homes, their own intimate environments. So that's like this whole other huge wealth of information for somebody like me. Um, you know, scanning, 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 scanning the exterior environment and, and noticing things that are unusual and seeing all the patterns. And then, you know, and then with the, the FI and the auxiliary position, um, wondering, particularly having a focus on subjective concerns about people, sociality, uh, psychology, human behavior, that kind of thing. Um, I'm taking what data I'm bringing in, my, my external, sorry, my uh, 
uh, extroverted intuition brings to me to think about. And I'm using a lot of my FI in particular to sort of wonder what the meaning is, you know, the, those two top functions in concert. I'm wondering, okay, well, if I, if I notice this strange phenomenon, what does it mean? Why, why is it happening? I would say that one of my favorite activities, period, you know, if anyone ever asks me, what are you into? You know, what do you like to do? I say that um, my, in general, one of my very, very favorite things is interpretation. Uh, surprise, you know, considering the givens. Um, and I would say reverse engineering aesthetic and social phenomena. That's what I get the biggest bang out of doing. I'd love to, I, if I could, I would just do that all day, you know, just all day, every day, because I just love it so much and I get so much out of it. So, all right. So that's the big background. So I started to do all this research on YouTube and, um, what I started to notice now, mind you, here's, here's a bias. I got to do a little d disclaimer here. I was spending a particular amount of time, and I, I have so far, I've been spending a particular amount of time looking at the uh, INFP, INTP, INTJ, INFJ uh, vloggers out there. So <clears throat> I really have been paying mostly attention to them and um, also looking at other NFs. Uh, so I'm not if very familiar for all my time and my thousands of hours I've spent on thinking about, talking about, reading about the Myers-Briggs. Um, I really specialize in the end types. Uh, I don't, I know some sketch things about, um, the, the S types, each of the ones. And I know, uh, you know, I know because of some of mine, some of them are, some of my relatives are SJs, for example. I know some things about a couple of those types, but my focus really has been more on the end side of things. So that's one, uh, thing to know is that for anything that I'm saying lately, uh, is that I don't I am quite ignorant about that whole other side the whole other eight types there that are more majoritarian um, so there's that and uh, what else um, and I also don't know nearly as many of them in, in person and in face-to-face life I know them in work life a bit but I most of my friends the people that I know rather more intimately and all of my partners have been I think I'm pretty I'm pretty sure yeah most, if not all, of my um, any of my partners have been N's as well, NTs or NFs. So there. Um, here's the other thing, the other disclaimer again, because I know what I'm saying is is pretty sensitive, and and it's it, probably a lot of people are not going to like to hear that, or you know, even they might not even like it suggested that something may be going on here. So I also want to be I also want to be sure to say that. Um, because of several of my good friends becoming uh, really interested in the MBTI too, I'm getting also lots of th third hand kind of information from the wider world, face to face world, because those friends of mine are reporting back to me uh, what, you know, what's been going on when they brought the MBTI subject up with their groups of friends that I don't know. And then because I'm, you know, of the people I know, I'm the one who knows by far, by far the, the most about it so far. Um, they're kind of coming and talking to me about what they're noticing and they are reporting lots of stuff back to me about um, other extroverted types and uh, some S types too who also ha are having a pretty crap uh, track record for typing themselves as well. They're, they're just obviously with way, 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 many of them way, 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 way off. So, so again, I just want to say, I just want to emphasize you guys for the, the INs who may be watching this. I am not picking on you guys. I am not, uh, I am not, yeah, I'm, please know that, that, that I'm not doing that. I'm just, it's just that I've had these observations and I'm, I'm noticed a sort of pattern and I'm wondering what it means. And I've got a little theory to interpret this pattern that I'm seeing. And, um, again, I very much invite and, and welcome your, uh, input on this. Um, because yeah, so many of you are a bunch of smarty pantses and, and also, um, INs are known to be, um, particular of, of the different types in the 16. They're known to be, um, for being so very, they're rare in the general population, but the IN types are very overrepresented, particularly the INS, uh, among people very, very deeply interested in the MBTI and, and nerdy about it. Um, so again, this is kind of your, it's, it's a, a body of knowledge you're going to be particularly interested in and, and that you would probably have a lot of stuff to, to contribute to. So there's that. All right. Wow. That was a lot. Of, 
That was a lot of lead up. I hope you're still with me. Um, okay. So here's here was my question. Here was the here's the sort of research question here now, uh, or a theoretical question. What I was notice what I've been noticing in my two months or so um, reading, listening to so many IN people's um, videos, and then also reading with great interest the the long and detailed comment threads underneath those videos. Um, what I was, what I've been noticing a lot of is that there seems to be, uh, this seems to be a thing. It seems to be well known. This is, I'm not saying anything new here. Um, that the ion types are very likely to um, kind of go through a winding path to finding what their true type is. Uh, for example, it's very, very common. And I also, I, by the way, I have found this too in the 20 years of experience with all my different kinds of friends, where there's a big preponderance of the creative thinking types, the end types. Uh, I certainly have seen with many of them, they too sort of um, very understandably kind of going down the garden path about some things just because they don't, they don't know a lot about the MBTI. So, um, so what's been interesting to me is that I've been seeing a, a whole lot of these IN um, commentators in the threads, uh, <clears throat> discussion threads, and they are, are uncommonly knowledgeable about the uh, MBTI. And yet sometimes, though, I'm seeing I'm seeing these uh, a whole bunch of people who, in the the kinds of questions they're posing, the kinds of subjects they're that are really broaching, the way in which they're posing the questions. Um, the kind of emphasis of on different themes over others, and so on. I'm for me, I'm reading these comments, and I'm just seeing all of these cues that are leading me to think, like, oh, um, I think I could guess, like, I think I can pretty quickly guess that such and such a person um, speaking is one or you know one type or another. I feel like I've got a, I've got some hints that that would be the direction that would be the most likely fruitful sort of line of inquiry to go in if those people wanted to be assessed for their true type. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of people who have a, have a lot of stories about how they've been working really hard on trying to figure out what their type is and they're very frustrated and they're uh, quite confused and they are just really kind of, they're just on the fence about a bunch of things. But what I'm finding is very often when I read what they're saying, um, for me, I'm like, oh my God, again, from just from my perspective, I really feel like in many cases, I'm like, it's so obvious you're a thing and not this other thing you're wondering about. Um, so that's where this question came from. I'm like, why is it that this subpopulation, which is so represented and tends to be so much so knowledgeable about the MBTI, why aren't they doing better at typing themselves? Like, what's go I, I, it made me curious. Like, what's going on here? You know, because they see it seems like they they have all the equipment to be doing better than other types at this. So why am I not seeing that, or why do I not think I'm seeing that out there? All right, so that's what's happening, and um, so that's that's the question. That's the question, and particularly like the the INS, they're they're reputed to um, a lot of those people are, are reputed to be um, very overrepresented among those who are very talented um, and developed in being terrific counselors for other people. Um, they're known for being conceptual thinkers. They're very they have a all the, all four of those ion types are known for having. Um, their dominant functions being very preoccupied with abstract thinking. Um, that's sort of the realm in which they live. And the INS in particular are known for being terrific with people. So again, my question is why then are they not, d does it seem, I don't know if this is true or not, but why does it seem from based on all this stuff I'm taking in from my little corner of the universe, why aren't they doing a much better job at typing themselves. Now, here's my theory, okay? And I wonder what you, I really do wonder what you think about this. Um, now, I, I, there are four parts to it of, of a partial theoretical explanation for why um, this is happening, why there are so many IN types who are mistyped and they are mistyping themselves and possibly mistyping others, I'm not sure, um, but definitely not not quickly, correctly typing themselves anyway. There seems to be a great number of them. 
Um, now, first one is just that the Myers-Briggs temperament indicator is uh, an instrument that, <clears throat> as discussed elsewhere, and as I will be speaking more about in, in, in upcoming videos, um, the MBTI is, is rather... I don't want to say it's complex compared to a lot of other things, but as far as psychometrics go, um, of the ones I've been exposed to, it, it's quite complex compared to those. And it, especially if you get into the whole Jungian theory that is what informed, um, well, didn't just inform it, it's, it, it formed the basis for the MBTI system. That stuff is um, quite terrifically complex um, if you go into it. So, uh, Another thing that I think is really uh, something that cannot be said often enough out there is that the MBTI is something that you need to know a great deal about it to um, be able to use it at all correctly. And it just so happens that um, because it's such a popular topic, it's such a popular instrument, um, there are so many people all over the world really fascinated with it and, and discussing it and the vast, 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 vast majority um, not only are not certified practitioners in it, uh, i.e. highly trained individuals who know the thing inside out and know how to administer it to people, but they're uh, people who haven't even been, who have not been properly assessed. And a huge part of the official MBTI assessment, perhaps, probably the bigger, the biggest part of it is what happens in a face-to-face -face counseling session because the actual questionnaire itself and, and mind you I'm speaking about the long form official questionnaire so never even mind the little dinky rinky dink short ones that are out there okay like the long form thing um, the reason it can work at all is because a huge part of a, of a legit assessment is these trained MBTI practitioner going through everything and, and verifying everything and probing and clarifying and asking questions of the person who's taking the inventory um, to really ascertain if the type that the questionnaire um, results indicated really is that person's type. There's so many places it can go wrong and this is in the long form one and this is you know when it's being the, the inventory taking is being uh, is accompanied. So just imagine what can go wrong then with the with a whole bunch of people who hear a tiny little bit about this model and they're like, oh, that's cool. And then they go and do these online um, short form things, which and I'm not saying they're not they, those aren't helpful because um, I believe that they are. It's just that if you go and take them and you haven't done you haven't read pages and pages of, you know, authoritative stuff to, to put everything in context. Um, about what the preference skills are about and, and so on, then you're going to be just totally, of course, you're going to be totally confused. And of course, you're going to be way off base. And of course, you're going to be mistyping the crap out of yourself um, all over. So that's a very understandable and, and sort of general uh, difficulty with um, the MBTI and mistyping within it. Now, to turn to the other three parts of my little theory about why it is that the IN types, you know, in, obviously in general, like there's a huge generalization. This is just a question. Um, but I, I wonder if the other three parts of my idea of why it is the IN types are not doing better than most people, it would seem to me, um, at typing themselves is uh, I think it's really a result of their own strengths being a double-edged sword um, and perhaps working against their um, best interests in typing themselves. And they are as follows. Um, the first one is I, I think that there might be with the ion types um, because they are so known for being uh, usually very intelligent, um, very creative thinking, uh, and very apt to think in abstract terms. You put all those things together and you've got people that are very, very often are very caught up in theory. You know, they're very, very interested in theory and they very often, if they've developed their cognitive functions, their, their uppermost ones, um, they're going to, they're not just going to want to think about theory. They're going to be probably pretty good at creating it. And, I wonder if maybe in some cases when their ions are trying to type themselves, if they're, it's not just a matter of misinformation. Um, it might also be that they are 
over complex <laughs> this isn't a word i realize but they are making the the the, the process of, of self-typing they're making it more complex than a it needs to be and b maybe it, then it should be you know to work properly maybe there's extra second guessing going on there's precisely because of the strength in creative thinking and in abstract thinking and in curiosity and 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 introspection as well perhaps there's like a lot of extra second guessing going on that really shouldn't be happening if your aim again if your aim is to type yourself correctly specifically um because I, I've seen that, you know, I've, I've seen in these comment threads um, people who are talking about the cognitive functions and how the cognitive functions apply to them and which ones they think they have and, and how they're interacting. And I mean, some of these things from the INs, they're so, <laughs> they're really, they're, they're so convoluted. They're so complex and they're quite impressive. Again, they're, they're like, when I read a lot of them, I'm like, wow, that's what a neat take on that or what a, you know, what a complex figuring of the problem um it's kind of fun to see the how their minds are working but what i'm also seeing very often in these in these really kind of impressive um comments about typing themselves i'm also seeing though that they're completely off base like they're just compl they've, they've really in many cases they've just completely at some point wandered right away from like whatever the model actually says or what it what it's supposed to be indicating like they've just they've just taken a bit of M the M actual mbti stuff and then they just run really far afield with it so you end up having certain things that are completely impossible within the model like people saying oh i'm an infp ish infj what you know just all kinds of stuff that um, if that certified practitioners know um, and people who've done read the authoritative texts on it know are, are completely impossible. I mean, it's just it's not possible to be that. Um, so that's number uh, two. The third thing I wonder if um, that might be contributing to a lot of mistyping on the parts of the INs um, has, again, to do with uh, one of their greatest strengths. All of the INs have, very naturally, they have a very interior focus. Um, and that's where all that, de you know, that f the, the depth that they're famous for, the depth of uh, feeling in the case of the INFs, and the depth of, of thinking too, conceptualizing on the part of all of them. And, <clears throat> you know, these are people who spend, a, not only spend a great deal of time alone, because they bloody well need to, just to feel okay, but, uh, you know, so they can function at all but they're also doing it because they really like their own company and they really you know that's that's where their focus is what the the, the questions that all introverts ask themselves often is how is this affecting me again they're they're participating in the world obviously you know <laughs> i hope they are anyway they're out there in the world they're participating they're interacting with others but they're very often they're they're looking around at what's out there they're, they're finding things that are of interest to them. And then they're, so to speak, they're taking those things inside themselves. And that's where most of the work that they're doing, that's where it's happening. It's very much in the inside. It's on their own, very rich, complex inner worlds, very abstract in many cases. So, and a lot of the time. So that's where the best of what they have to produce and like offer the rest of us, like that's where that action is. It's inside themselves. And I wonder, I have to wonder if maybe this tendency to, again, orient inward so much, I wonder if it means that you guys are, again, big generalization coming up, big generalization. So not true. And I, I understand this is not going to be true in all cases by any means, but I do have to wonder if you've got this very persistent, deep, chronic, you know, like lifelong tendency to focus on the inside of yourself and what you're making of things inside yourself. Doesn't that mean then that maybe you are missing some things on the outside? You are missing some indicators on the outside. In other words, even though you might be very, very intelligent and, and very thoughtful and, and working hard on the thing and really informed about the, the background theory of the type that goes into the typing, if maybe you're, you are not seeing yourselves as clearly as some people who might have a more simple um, conceptual framework would, or, and or people 
who spend a lot of time looking outside and, and differentiating things on the outside in the exterior world, looking at behavioralisms, looking at, at tendencies and, and what, looking at what people are actually doing. I don't know. This is a question I have. The last part, um, that I wonder if it's, it's, it's a, again, a, a, a strength. Um, a characteristic that the IN people of the IN types share um, that might be getting in the way of them correctly typing themselves, in particular typing themselves, and that's really all anyone should be doing, right? Is is that you know unless they're you're invited to to try and type somebody, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, but trying to focus, trying to type themselves, um, almost. <laughs> I think all, all the introverts are, are famous for this, but I think maybe even particularly uh, the IN ones are for um, really not wanting to ask for outside help. Really, and I and you know what I, I had you know I know this. This is to me of all the things I've said in this video. This is a this is a freaking fact. This is not disputable whatsoever because I just have so, so much vast experience with IN types and in, in my love life. And um, they. You know, all my boyfriends, all my girlfriends of the past, they, they would, they would rather, they would go to so many lengths, just, and I know you guys, you INs out there, I know you're going to relate to this. Um, they will do just about anything to not have to ask a stranger for directions, to not have to talk to one more clerk that they don't have to, one more stranger that they don't have to in the outside world. And so I know that you guys who are, who are using like all these other talents to try and type yourselves, I know that a great many of you must be very resistant to opening up and seeking the input of others for this project of yours of typing yourselves. And I think that's a real shame because, um, I mean, it's not, a sh it's not a shame usually at all. You know, and, and, I, and I, I certainly don't mean to criticize this like essential part of who you are, you know, and, and what's best about you. In fact, that's uh, please don't think I'm, I'm doing that. I'm just saying, though, that this extreme reluctance to work with others and particularly about something that's as private as typing oneself, you know, I can it's a sensitive matter. Um, I think that that might be getting in the way for a lot of um, IN types getting it right about themselves. Like I think maybe they especially might benefit from people with an outside view of what they're actually like and, and, and what they're seeing. And I'm going to totally address this actually in a video really soon about <laughs> the, the, like the, the J versus P thing, which is so not contrary. Like, again, if you know what to look for, it is so not hard to figure out. It is, I mean, most of the time, most of the time there, I'm sure there are exceptions, but I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, like, so again, someone who pays a lot of attention to people and a lot of people over 20 years in the external environment, it is not hard to tell who's a P and who's a J in most cases. You know, if you ask some questions, you spend a bit of time with somebody and you look at their personal environments, it's not hard at all. So uh, the fact that there's so many people dead, you know, just fatally stumped on this is I'm like, what is up? Like, what is up with that? As they say. So yeah, um, I would suggest that if any of you want are really frustrated, you're having a hard time self-typing, um, you're not getting anywhere, and you've exhausted all of your you know super introverted preferred ways of of figuring some stuff out, um, I do encourage you strongly for many reasons to try and reach out to knowledgeable people, people knowledgeable about the MBTI, and people who are knowledgeable about what you're like um, in life. In different settings because that those people might have they might be holding that one the keystone you know to figuring out what that preference is on this or that scale they might be able to to sort of go well of course you're a blah 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 because you do this and you do this all the time and I've seen it over years and years and years and you might be like oh really I think it's worth having the discussion, you know? I, I Again, I think you should avail yourselves. If you really want to get there, you should avail yourselves of, of what's uh, there that might help you. So the other reason why I hope you're going to do this um, is because you people, the INs, you are already, so, so many of you are, again, disproportionate number of you are already so invested in MBTI-related stuff, and you're, you are already, you're in there, you know? You're already in there in, in this common interest that we have. And you guys with your the different kinds of talents you have, the very special talents and very special combinations of, of 
um, proclivities that you have and that have probably in many cases been led to ability as well because you've been working on them and you've been working them out, you know, according to those proclivities, your cognitive functions. You're, you've been working out your cognitive functions according to uh, the proclivities that they indicate. Um, you are the ones that have, you have, I mean, the ones, everybody does, but you, you do have a very special contribution to make to the knowledge about the MBTI. So I would love to see more of you um, getting it right, you know, getting, getting uh, better at typing, getting better at typing yourselves. And, and for those of you that have been asked um, by dint of your expertise in, in, the, in this theoretically, who've been asked to assist others um, in typing themselves, I would love it if you uh, got better at that, you know, and I, I, w I want to get better at it too. So um, we will see what comes of all this. Uh, again, I look forward to seeing what the comments are. And um, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.